Hello everybody, welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program video, and in today's video I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on how to build a fully reusable Saturn V rocket. We're going to be uh, starting in the vehicle assembly building today where I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to construct the rocket, and then once that is done we're going to head out to the launch pad and I'm going to uh, show you guys how to recover all three stages of the Saturn V rocket. So without further ado, let's get straight into the vehicle assembly building and get working on the rocket. So we're going to be starting from the top and working our way to the bottom. So first thing we're going to add is the Apollo uh, command module, the Mark 1-3 command pod. And then we can add the uh, making history adapter thingy. You, uh, making history is required for this uh, build, I should uh, should preface that by saying. Then we're going to add four parachutes here. You're going to actually want to uh, move the parachutes actually slightly outside so they're not actually uh, clipped into the um, to the walls there, uh, which is uh, something I forgot to film because if you leave it how I had it right there, it, they fail, the parachutes will actually fail to deploy. They'll say, like, cannot deploy while stowed. So uh, make sure you actually do uh, move them I did forget to film that so uh, yeah keep that in mind so after that uh, it's time to construct the launch escape tower and as you can see the escape tower uh, clearly is uh, that's not you know it's too big right um, so we're actually going to have to make a custom escape tower because the weird like shroud thing on the normal one but yeah it would look too weird so I'm going to take some fuel tanks here and then um, I'm going to uh, get some sepatrons and that's going to be our kind of makeshift uh, launch escape system. Also going to get um, a little uh, probe core on here um, because hey, we you know fully reusable, right? So we need to uh, fully reuse the uh, for the probe core. So uh, the uh, launch tower. So um, we get the probe core, we get the parachute, and then we're going to get a nose cone on top just for uh, you know just because you need aerodynamics, right? And then um, I do actually, uh, I believe uh, I drain the fuel out of those fuel tanks, those two uh, liquid fuel tanks. You don't actually want to do that. You want to drain the fuel out of the top one, but the bottom liquid fuel tank there on the uh, uh, escape tower you don't want to drain uh, for uh, uh, you know stability on re-entry so now we're going to get a decoupler and then we're going to get the uh, service module here and then we're going to get some fuel onto the service module. Um, the primary thing you want to get with the service module is you want to get a lot of fuel in. You also want to make sure it has electricity and all sorts of stuff like that. Now keep in mind, we are, uh, like I said, reusing everything. Um, so you do want to be slightly weight cognizant. And you also want to um, be aware that the, um, the lander is going to stay attached to the Apollo service module um, on the way back to Kerbin. So you need to make sure you can account for that extra weight being attached. And it's normally not attached. So uh, yeah. So basically the way we're going to recover the Apollo spacecraft which is the command pod service module and lander um, is basically we're just going to keep the lander attached and then we are going to just parachute the whole thing down basically when you come back from the month um, in the interest of time when we get to the launch uh, portion of the video I'm not going to show them just going to show the recovery of the first three stages uh, because I feel like the last part's a uh, pretty self-explanatory you just you just come back to curb and then you deploy the parachutes when you're low enough uh, this video is already longer than I would like it to be so yeah um, so getting some electricity, and uh, remember the Apollo spacecraft was powered by fuel cells, so you put some fuel cells on like I did a little bit earlier. Um, last thing I'm going to do with that side is I'm going to put some reaction wheels on, because hey, you can't go wrong with reaction wheels. They're like the best part in the in entire game. So stacking some reaction wheels on while we're doing that. I would like to quickly say if you're enjoying the video, or if you find this uh, helpful later on, if you if you want to smash in that there subscribe button, I mean if you want to, I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, like, oh my gosh guys, you better do it, you better do it. Um, yeah, if you want to, you know, feel free to, you know, or like or join the Discord. Um, you know, if there's anything you don't, it isn't clear from this tutorial, I'm sure someone on the Discord could could help you out, right? So, uh, yeah, that's basically my little plugs aside. And oh my gosh, guys, you better subscribe to join my giveaway. Um, actually, pro tip, guys, they can, YouTubers can actually know if you're subscribed. So that is actually fake. They that they made that up. The whole join so you can enter the giveaway. It doesn't actually enter you into anything unless you have sub your subscription public. That's the only way I can see if you're subscribed. So. And that's like one one hundredth of my subscribers that have that public, or maybe one tenth. I don't, either way, the point is, BS. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so we're gonna put a Wolfhound engine on the bottom here. Get some RCS thrusters. You want to get the five-way new RCS thrusters, and you want to place them on the center of mass. Uh, just wanted to uh, get uh, point that out. And then we want to get the uh, lunar lander started here. So we're gonna get the uh, the lunar lander, which comes with the Making History DLC. And then we're going to want to get a spark engine. We're going to make sure you, we get it um, onto that uh, top node, as you can see. It's a little bit tricky to get there, but you don't want to get it on the bottom node, or else you know you want it to actually get it all the way up into the into the lander. I think I'm making sense, but I don't know. So next, we're going to get a um, 
a TD-18, the 1.875 meter uh, decoupler, and you can see how the skirt kind of extends to the length of the decoupler is what you want. And then we're going to want to get uh, the 12, um, 1.2 meter or the Mark 1, um, uh, what you might call the structural panels, right? And then you want to make sure they're colored gold, and then you want to just get uh, six-way symmetry enabled. And that is basically how you make the uh, the bottom stage of the uh, of the lander. Now, keep in mind, since we are fully reusable here, you're not actually going to be staging away the bottom stage of the lander unless you unless you want to. I mean, um, it would ha will have enough delta V to actually get back, but just keep that in mind. Um, so you can want to enable cross feed on the uh, on the decoupler, so the fuel from the from the top stage can actually drain into the fuel of the bottom stage. So it can actually make it back. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to put some structural panels over here on the uh, on the top area just so we can actually cover up the holes. And then, uh, yeah, that's going to be most of the lander completed. Once we're done with the lander, we can start to work on the actual uh, rocket itself, which is going to be the uh, the primary focus of today's video, the Apollo spacecraft. Like, if you want to just make a Saturn V, you can also follow this tutorial. Like, you don't have to add the reusability parts, right? Um, you know, it just, yeah, <laughs> like I, yeah, so it's, this serves as like a Saturn V and a reusable Saturn V tutorial, I guess, so I guess that, that's kind of nice that I mentioned to smash the like button, no, just, that's kidding, um, I would, well, I, well, I will quickly like to plug my Discord a second now, because I want to get to it, we're, we're at like 770 members, I believe, on the Discord, and, uh, as of filming, I really want to get to a thousand, so, oh, and thank you guys for a few thousand subscribers, and it's January 1st, so it's 2021, so I need to set a new subscriber goal, um, about 6,000 subscribers by February. Well, let, yeah, we'll see what happens. I want to get to 6,000. That's another 3,000. Um, let's see if it works. It, I think the uh, likelihood of that happening, very, very low. But, uh, hey, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Now, uh, you want to put the Terrier engine on the... Um, Carry your engine on the uh, on the bottom of there, and then what you want to do is you want to choose the offset tool and move it onto the uh, onto the onto the lander itself. Um, because if you if you try to attach the landing legs directly to the gold part, it'll it'll make it force you into six-way symmetry. And there's only four landing legs, so you want to get into four-way symmetry. So you want to attach it to the bottom uh, fuel area. Um, and then you're going to just uh, slightly clip the uh, terrier engine into the top of the fuel tank uh, for two reasons, because uh, one reason is the uh, you really only want the engine bell showing for realism purposes, the bottom of the, it's kind of how it really looked in the Apollo thingy, and you want to have enough room so the landing legs can actually make it to the ground, so it's, you know, they're actually lower down than the engine. Um, so yeah, uh, last thing to do on the lander before we are all done, 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 dilly dango with it, um, <laughs> is uh, we're going to get some, uh, get the, the famous Apollo lander, which uh, famously had um, fewer rungs than was, like it didn't extend all the way down to the surface, it, it was like missing a few rungs, so yeah, that's, that's its deal. So we're going to get a structural panel extended out from the, uh, from the door there. I'm going to angle it down just a little bit uh, so the crew can actually walk to the lander. That's actually kind of how the real one, we real one did done look. And then uh, once we have that uh, all nice and set up, we can get ourselves um, a, a ladder. A nice little ladder to uh, get our get ourselves. Uh, I'm taking <laughs> taking a hot second here to, to get the uh, thing, get the thing oriented properly, but... Uh, Pretty, pretty difficult business, right? Um, and then you want to also probably enable auto strut and rigid attach on most things I should have mentioned. Um, if you don't know how to enable auto strut and or rigid attachment, you have to go to settings and you have to enable uh, advanced tweakables and that option will become available to you. Um, what auto strut does is it basically automatically struts it. So it like creates extra structural rigidity um, or not rigidity, but strength basically. Um, to your connections or to your parts and stuff. And then rigid attachment just uh, makes the attachment to the uh, other part um, where, you know, where the two parts attach uh, more rigid. Uh, what that means is it's not going to be able to like wobble around as much and it has its application. So you don't always want to enable a rigid attachment. An example where you don't want to enable it uh, is with fairings because if the attachment is really rigid, uh, the fairing tends to kind of snap off because it, it doesn't allow for movement. So stuff can snap off easier, but also it's not all wobbly. So it's kind of a trade off. So now we're going to go ahead and get a decoupler. Now we can actually start to work on the actual launch vehicle itself. So we're going to get a 3.75 meter fairing. We are going to get some batteries on top of this uh, fairing because you do want to keep in mind that this is this stage will be completely reused. So we do need enough electricity so the thing can actually uh, come back without running out of electric charge. Then we're going to get some more. Um, we're going to get some of uh, those guys and get some reaction wheels on top so the thing can control itself. Uh, during re-entry and during uh, during flight and in the vacuum, right? So this is going to be the third stage, obviously the S4B stage. 
Um, and this stage, uh, if you don't know uh, the flight profile of the Saturn V, what it basically did is it uh, was like a two and a half staged orbit, so it would burn the bottom two stages, and then it would burn half of the S4B stage. Um, to get into orbit and then it would use the other half of the stage to do its translunar injection or the burn that basically gets you out to the moon. So what we basically have to do is we're going to have to get ourselves onto that uh, translunar injection with the stage and then we're going to have to do a, ba a boost back burn basically. Not really, but we're going to turn around retrograde and then fire backwards. So um, it is important that you have a little bit of extra fuel uh, during this for this stage. Um, during its return because it's probably gonna have to do a little bit of a burn um, at Kerb and Periap so it actually can or while it's enduring while during its re-entry so it doesn't explode right because you're coming in from like you're coming at like 3,000 meters a second so um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some modular girders here um, to uh, act as landing legs um, for the thing because there's only one engine we're landing on here which is the skiff engine um, and if we just try to land on it it'd be very tippy so yeah we're just gonna we're gonna use those four modular girders to act as our landing legs uh, you you could use, I don't know if you guys just heard that, I got a notification. Um, on my phone, I should totally edit that out, but I'm not going to. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, now we can actually get to work on the uh, second stage of the rocket in which uh, we just basically extend it out and then we do a five meter uh, fuel tank. Um, and then we get uh, five skiff engines onto the bottom of this one. And like I said on the other one, um, well, you could have you could have used the uh, braking ground um, pistons to act as landing legs, but I kind of wanted to only have this uh, tutorial require the uh, uh, making history one, uh, just so people who don't have the breaking ground can also, they can feel included, right? Um, so now we're just going to get some um, reaction wheels, a probe core, and some batteries onto the bottom of this stage, and then we can get ourselves our five skiff engines on the bottom of it as well, and this stage uh, is going to be the second stage, and this stage is obviously not going to get us into orbit, so it's going to also just do a, do a nice little landing, um, and then don't forget, uh, which I did forget to do until now, uh, is to add some add some of those um add some of those air brakes right now most people would say you want to flip the air brakes 180 degrees so it like deploys the other way i didn't really want to do that because i'm i'm um, putting the air brakes kind of low down on this on the second stage already and if i flipped them over the air brakes would deploy at a really low altitude make the make the stage really flippy to uh to, to, to make my to make it quick right uh then we're gonna add some verner engines here on the stage to help it orient itself during its uh re-entry or i guess i don't think it ever exits the atmosphere so i guess it's fall <laughs> and then uh, then we can go ahead and add our final our final fuel tank here which is going to be the uh the bottom stage and then we're going to add the little engine adapter thingy here uh, which is also on the bottom stage, right? And then we can, uh, then that, that's basically most of the rocket complete. We can just go ahead and add our, um, add our four or five rather mastodon engines after we get a nice little probe core on here. Um, we're not going to put any reaction wheels on this stage because it is a, um, for two reasons. First of all, it is a really big stage. Um, so the reaction wheels, you need a lot of them to actually have an impact on the, on the, you know, the orientation and we're in the atmosphere. Um, so it'd be way easier to just use Werner engines and, yeah, because there's like drag, the reaction wheels really won't do much, um, basically. So no reason to have them. Then we can put some batteries there, and that is going to be basically the entire rocket complete. So in a few minutes here, we're going to head out to the uh, launch pad, but we still have a few housekeeping items left to do. So get some Werner engines on the bottom of the, or bottom and top of the bottom stage, so we can, you know, keep it, keep it oriented properly. And then we're going to go ahead and get, uh, get the uh, fins on the bottom stage. Uh, which is, you know, the fins pretty pretty important, and uh, yeah. So a after the fins are uh, done, then it's going to be uh, basically just time to get the staging set up, and then uh, going to be ready to to get launched. So it'll be any minute here now, guys. Uh, thank you if you're sticking around. Uh, if you uh, if you're still watching, if you're still following the tutorial, thank you guys. You guys seem to like these tutorials, so I'm going to do more in the future. Uh, yeah, probably next one's going to be a Buran slash Energy tutorial. So uh, I guess stay tuned for that one. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you guys all very much. If you're if you're still watching, still hanging, still hanging out with me. So last, a few items are to uh, first of all have a look here. Um, these are going to go by qu pretty quick here. So if you want to stop the video, uh, do feel free to do so. That's just basically what you want the second and third stage fuel to be. And then we can head out to the launch pad and get ready to get going. Um, yeah, you might, you probably would want to pause the video there if you got, because you don't want, you want to drain some of the fuel out of the second stage and the third stage, and I just showed you how much, because, um, the, uh, you won't actually be able to make it to orbit, you won't have enough thrust to weight ratio if you don't, uh, if you don't do that, so, yeah. Um, Craft File will be in the description if you do want it, if you do want to check it out, exactly what my build was, and maybe compare, you know, whatever. So, 
we have now launched the rocket and now we can start heading up to to orbit now keep in mind we are not going to be depleting all of the fuel out of the uh, three state the uh, bottom stage before we uh, before we jettison it and the second stage has a really low thrust to weight ratio uh, even after we uh, took out a lot of the fuel out so we're going to do a pretty steep ascent profile um, with the uh, with the rocket and then we're going to want to continue to burn the bottom stage until it has about 400 meters a second of delta v left in it and if you want to see how much delta v is left in stage you can look at the the uh, bottom left corner where you can see the staging you see it burning with the fuel and that little blue number above it is the amount of delta v left so when you get to 400 you want to make an f5 a quick save stage the thing away and then you want to switch over to the booster unfortunately the way ksp works there's no actual way to um to recover both the booster and the rocket, so we're gonna have to do a, a quick save, and then once we land the booster, we'll reload our quick save, and then we'll fly the uh, fly the upper stage. So now we're gonna wanna get ourselves oriented backwards, and we're gonna do a boost back burn because this stage is gonna be heading back to the Kerbal Space Center. We wanna burn until our um, our little trajectory thing is basically vertical, um, as you can see right there. Um, the reason we're going to do that is because we are going to be able to kind of fly the booster kind of like a plane um, to kind of give us the rest of our, to kind of glide, we're going to basically glide the booster uh, back to the KSC. That's how we're going to get all the, the rest of our horizontal velocity. Um, because if we just, if we burned all, we, if we burned our, burned even, you know, more, we would have overshot the KSC because um, the uh, the booster does actually generate lift, which is going to help extend our, extend our glide, if that makes sense. So now we're just using the RCS thrusters to kind of control the booster and want to scrub off as much speed as possible uh, aerodynamically so you can see I'm trying to do some kind of drag inducing maneuvers and it does seem to work as our speed comes to just below 300 meters per second and then at about one kilometer we can fire up those five Macedon engines we don't need them at full thrust because we don't have there's no rocket on top of this thing so it has ridiculously large amounts of a uh, large amount of power here so we just bring it down quite a bit of fuel to spare here so we can kind of kind of bring her in for a nice little landing there we go there we go that is the bottom stage recovered so then we can cross fade up to the second stage as it is getting itself into uh into uh well not orbit but you know one thing to keep in note here is granted the second stage has a low twr the uh, third stage has way lower of a twr so we're going to want to continue that a steep ascent profile um i kept it pitched to 40 degrees during basically the whole whole burn of the second and most of the third stage um, because the third stage, the second stage has a TWR of about 0.65. The third stage has a TWR of about 0.35. So it, it really does struggle to get moving. So what we're going to be looking here with the second stage is we're going to want to be getting our trajectory to trajectory to intersect that second peninsula there. And then once we are on a good trajectory to land on it, and we have about 800, 700, 600 meters a second of delta V left, now we can go ahead and stage it away, and then we can get ourselves... Uh, get the fuel pump to the bottom, and then we can get ourselves flipped backwards. Um, you, you, this thing has a lot of delta v to land with, so don't worry about. You want to just mainly worry about getting your trajectory right. You don't really wor have to worry about uh, uh, delta v with this stage. So we're going to pop the air brakes, get ourselves slowed down quite a bit, and then we can uh, reignite uh, the five uh, five engines and bring her in, bring her in for a nice nice little landing here. Uh, do keep in mind because these are skiffs are vacuum optimized engines. They have a little bit lower thrust at sea level, so you may have to start your burn just a little bit earlier. But um, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, a lot of fuel in this stage, so there's really not nothing to worry about. And the stage really is quite light. You don't have to start your burn that much lower. The TWR is about two, uh, and the, do, the air brakes do help you slow down quite a bit. So now uh, we can bring her in for a nice a nice soft little landing here. I, um, yeah, we have a lot of fuel, so we can kind we can kind of bring her in nice and slow and get a nice a nice buttery landing, and 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 touchdown! Oh, we've we've did it, guys. Um, now for the final stage that we're going to be recovering is the third stage as we get make our way into orbit with this stage. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get ourselves um, basically our apple our our time to apple apps to be kind of normal or. Not normal, but we want to make sure we actually have time to wrap laps because or else if we if we try and pitch over and fly flat, we'll just fall back down to Kerbin. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep pitching until we feel like we have enough time to apple laps, and then we can start to pitch over right here, and then we can try and get ourselves accelerated in the horizontal direction so we can actually get ourselves in, into an orbit here. It may take a little bit of adjustment. You just want to basically, when you get to your apple laps, you want to basically try to make sure you stay level 
um, and then you will get into orbit. There we go. And then we can deploy the fairing, flip a retrograde, and then you probably want to set up an action group to deploy the launch escape system, which I did. And there it goes. So you want to uh, go into action groups, go into custom one probably. Sorry, I, didn't, I forgot to film this portion, but... Um, uh, you want to uh, set custom one, you want to make sure you decouple the docking port and fire those Sepatron engines. So we flip the rocket retrograde and fire the Sepatron retrograde uh, to, so the uh, launch escape tower actually deorbited itself. And then we're going to want to pre-deploy the parachute right away because the probe core is going to run out of electric charge pretty quickly, uh, which means you won't really be able to deploy the probe core. Uh, we deploy the parachute once you get low enough um, to do so. So we have to pre-deploy it, and then there it goes out just as scheduled. And then the launch escape tower can bring itself in for a nice little landing. There's really no reason to recover the launch escape tower. <laughs> I don't know why. Because on my other uh, reusable Saturn V video, uh, it was a, quite a while ago I did it, I got a lot of comments saying, OMG, the, Saturn, the launch escape tower isn't reused, 0 out of 10 clickbait. Um, I mean, uh, granted, those were like all sarcastic. It was a good, good pretty funny, but uh, yeah, they'll put those haters down, right? Um, so now we can get uh, our uh, burn planned with the um, with the third stage, which is going to be our translator injection burn, in which we'll get on a trajectory out to the moon. And this will be the uh, last stage that I show the recovery for, because, uh, like I said earlier in the video, the recovering the Apollo spacecraft is uh, is fairly self-explanatory. So there we go. We can do the Apollo reconfiguration here. And there we go, and then we can get rid of the second, or we can stage away the third stage, do our little retrograde bird, and then we can crossfade over to us re-entering. Yeah, and then we're going to do a little bit of an entry burn here, and just so this stuff doesn't burn up. We have a lot of extra delta B here, so don't really worry about that. I try to land on land as much as possible, because I feel like it's a, well, you know, it's a little more realistic, because why would you kind of like land it in the water? That'd be like a pain to, you know, try and recover and stuff. So I do a little bit of a burn um, once we get, uh, once we get a little bit ways up here, um, just so... Uh, just because I, uh, you know, just so we can actually lower our our, our, our trajectory so we can actually land on land, because we were on a trajectory land on water. So there we go, doing a little bit of a burn now, and then we can we can just let her re let her re-enter. This thing does a really good job of slowing down. It gets really, really, really slow um, with just the air brakes and just using itself as drag. So as you can see here, it, it does scrub off a lot of velocity, and then I can go ahead and pop open the air brakes, and here we coming down for a nice little landing. I've said that every time. Nice little landing. I don't know. Repeating words are fun. Um, you want to start your burn really, really early with this stage um, because the um, skiff has, like I said, very little thrust, and there's only one of them. So, yeah, you want to start your burn nice and early here. Um, it's okay if it's inefficient because there is, like, so much delta V. Like, you'll see I get down here, and I just kind of hover it over the ground for a few seconds just just for the fun of it, just because just I can. See, so yeah, like I said, we're now through about 4 meters a second, just under 30 meters, and we are now going to bring her down eventually for eventually for a landing any day. Now, this is what I meant about just hovering it. <laughs> and, and, touchdown! And that is the Saturn V fully reused. Um, that's going to bring us to the end of the video. So if you found the tutorial helpful, um, thanks. I'm glad I, glad I, glad I could help. Um, yeah, so that, that's going to bring us to the end. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Please put a comment to this video once again. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. And bye.